Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard G. And the Fishing Machine here. Today, we're going to do a catch, clean, and cook with the best eating fish in fresh water. And that would be the sauger. Okay, to start off with, let's talk about my setup right here. And it's very important, I think. Everything about fishing, from reels and rods to techniques to the color of the baits that you're using to the size jig head to the size leader, everything about about it is detailed, very detailed. And there's my motions in it. But to begin with, when you're using braid, eight pound test braid, fishing for, let's talk about sauger in specific. Um, I used to believe in a medium action rod, medium, medium power rod. Now, I like a light power rod. The reason is, is because used to, I used to use mono instead of braid. But with braid, especially eight pound test braid, there's, a, there's absolutely no stretch in the line. So you can get by with a lighter power rod um, and a smaller jig head. Than, I mean, I was fishing in 24 feet of water, 24 to 26 feet of water using a 1 16th of an ounce jig head. And I'll show you the jig head right here and this bait right here, which is magic. That's a magical bait when things are tough. These are just one sixteenth of an ounce crappie pro jig heads. There's one right there. Now, if you notice, uh, the collar has been cut off. Normally, the collar comes down to about where my fingernail is right there. And I clip it off with side cutters and I wrap the shank of that hook with dental floss. Now here's my magic bait and I've used it a lot on this channel. Normally when I use this bait, it's bad tough conditions. Well, like today. And it's the tiny fluke. Bait fish is the color. Now the reason why I do this on all my jig heads, cut the collar off is to keep from distorting right the, the front of your plastic whatever bait you're going to use with that um, collar it will actually split conventional plastic like these zooms are made out of so that's the reason why I cut it and then after I rig it after I rig it then I use Lock, Loctite super glue. This is the only glue that I know of, and I use the ultra gel control. And I get a lot of questions. <laughs> what about the, the scent that it leaves on the bait? Won't that keep the fish from biting it? No, this is, a, there's no scent. No scent at all, folks. This is just a plus right here. But this Loctite right here will work on any plastic, um, including Elastec, uh, Z-Man products, and also Nico products. Um, some glues will cause a chemical reaction with with those two, Nico, and also um, Elastec. Any type of Elastec, it'll cause a, a but, but this won't. So that's the point I'm trying to get at right now. But let me show you something. Okay, once glued up, that's the way it's going to look. Now, that's what I mean. See, you don't see no distortion or anything behind the head of that jig head. It's clean. It'll come through the water clean. It's a, it's a very good application to use even on saltwater baits, like fishing for speckled trout or redfish or flounder. And it's by cutting uh, that collar off and then putting either a wax waxless um, dental floss like I use or you know a lot of people use this braid there's a lot of different kind of materials you could use but what it does it, it keeps the shape of whatever plastic that you're going to use and not distort it up here and split it that's the reason why I do that another reason is I can catch a lot of fish and not have to worry about it tweaking the bait every time I catch a fish or a fish pulling it down 
you know, I can't stand that. When I'm fishing, I want to focus on fishing. But now this is the kind of die I use. This is real important. Um, it's a sharp, true, scarlet, spike it die. <clears throat> and all I do is just barely, barely dip that tail in there just about like that. Just enough to give it a little bit of shine. Now this is supposed to look like, and it does in the water, a uh, yellowtail or uh, threadfin shad is the real name but we call them yellowtails that right there is just a natural presentation that will catch all fish even terrible conditions like we fished today now folks as far as the way I rig right here it's real simple I have a leader right here probably about five feet long but you could use a two foot leader I mean three foot leader it don't make any difference that's a double uni knot this is eight pound test red Cajun mono. Red Cajun was designed back in the day to be virtually invisible. Uh, it was the fluorocarbon before fluorocarbon came out. And, and, it's, and it stands true, fish can't see that color. Red Cajun line has great stretch, ties knots real good. It's just a good leader to use. But, um, uh, or you know for carbon you know I use them both so but a loop knot is the deal right here now today the fish was very tough to catch so what I did a lot of them I caught them by picking the bait up off the bottom folks four or five inches and just twitching the bait like that holding it right in front of the fish's face um, now that loop knot will allow this plastic okay to come up in a horizontal position just like a minor swims and you can just hold that in front of an inactive fish and catch them that a lot of the fish that I caught today that's what I did that worked out uh, so good that I started really catching them there at the end and a lot of fish and that's a great way to catch inactive fish that don't want to bite Let's get up here and make a parallel cast right here. Now the water has got a color to it. It's not exactly muddy, what I call muddy, but it surely is dingy, real dingy. So that sharp truce tail may help us get a few bites. The shad are just about this size around this dam right now. They're not very big, so this size of bait a three inch bait is pretty well appropriate in the winter time in my opinion here on the tennessee river that's why i love this tiny fluke now all i'm going to do is just like i'm doing right now we're on we're contact we're excuse me folks it's cold we're in contact with the bottom i'm going to get tickled with myself and i'm just going to come up four or five inches like that and let it fall back I'm not going to work it very aggressive Woo! what a rough old day to want to go fishing but now I'm going to tell you I go when I can there we go because it's good for me there he is there's a fish folks hey this one right here feels like a good one this feels like a lot better fish. Let's get her net right here. Yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, I'm excited. I am, oh my goodness, what a sauger. Let's, let's get him right here. Woo wee. Doggone it. I'm going to tell y'all what, if I don't catch another one, if I don't catch another, if this fish measures, we're going to put him in the bucket. I got me a cooler with some ice on it. In it. I'm excited. My, my, my. Now, folks, this is a delicious eating fish right here. It's cold. Cabin fever it is not a good thing, but that's a keeper sauger right there, folks. I'm going to put him right here in this bucket because we may catch another one or two. But if we don't, I'll fillet that. We'll 
will doggone sure eat him. I guarantee you that. Sauger is delicious. Now, that's got me fired up. Yeah, it's cold. It's miserable out here. It is. But the sport of fishing is second to none. Do y'all hear it? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? The doggone fishing, the, the, it's second to none. Woo! It don't take a lot of action to catch one. I just want to point that out and make that pretty clear. Just pick it up a few inches and let it go back. Now, a lot of times, I'll just hold it in place a couple inches off the bottom. Like right there, okay, it's on the bottom. See the slack line? I'll pick it up a couple inches off the bottom and just hold it there and jig it. Now, I don't know how many sauger I've caught like that in the past. I'm many a sauger. This dingy water don't concern me at all. Uh, those of y'all who fishes for sauger a lot knows that oftentimes in the winter, these fish actually bite better at night than they will in the daytime. So, you know, their lateral line obviously is, is, is just perfect for sensing any movement or vibrations in the water. Uh, and their eyesight is adaptable 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 that's a big old word from what i've read to to dingy water i count of a lot of influx of rain um to night at night they can see exceptionally well also so they're just a top-notch predator no doubt there he is my 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 got another one i moved up a little bit folks yeah i'm excited i moved up just a little bit and here we are we're bit once again fish is fighting there he is oh my goodness could this be another keeper could this be another keeper it sure looks like it yeah, doggone right. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Folks, <laughs> that is a good one. I believe we got keeper number two, and I'm proud of it. I just wanted a couple to eat, and we done it. All I wanted was just a couple to eat, and I believe we've done it. Wow. That fish eat that. See how, look how far, far down that jig is. Let's put him in the bucket. Whew. Look at there. Two good ones. I'm cold. I'm real cold. I should have dressed a little bit warmer, but that warmed me up. Now, that strike right there was let me explain something real quick to y'all while we're doing right here now that i figured out how to catch a few now the only reason why i'm i'm being able to use a 1 16th of an ounce jig head here in about 24 feet of water is because of this braid now when it comes to braid you can get by with using lighter jig heads and smaller baits there's just no doubt about that folks so this to me which i've mentioned this for years braid is no doubt fantastic for this kind of fishing right here not only is it very sensitive you can like i said you can use smaller baits and fish them deeper i mean that's just it in a nutshell and the sensitivity is far more than mono. Even though I like mono for certain applications or techniques, braid is superior under conditions like this. This bait right here has pulled off a lot of good fishing for me in bad, bad conditions, terrible conditions.
I'll just move up and down this wall right here and see if we can lo locate some fish. Because these fish, especially high water conditions, they're going to definitely be traveling up and down this wall. All species will. There he is. Well, I seen that bite. I seen that line go through. There's a good one right there, folks. Mm. He's doing some more pulling right there. Look at there, what a fish. And that jig is gone. Let's see if we can flip him. Golly. That's a big sauger right there. I mean, that is a big sauger. Wow. Let's, let's check him out right here. Let's see where the... Can y'all see that? That jig is absolutely gone. I hope my camera shots is pretty good. What it is, I have this life vest on. And my camera's kind of out of position from where I'm, I normally, you know, need it to be. Or I'm used to it to be, to be in. But that's a good fish right there. Let's put him in the bucket. That fish right there is 15 and a half inches, folks. Let's put him in the bucket. My, my, my. Okay, folks, let's see if we can go ahead and catch a limit. All we need to do is catch one more sauger and we'll have a limit. And then we'll go on home, fillet them, and see if Mama Sue will cook them up for us. Sauger is a delicious eating fish. Let's catch another. On it. There he is. Oh me. This could be a the, the oh this could be a keeper, folks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. Oh I'm ready to get out of here. It is rough out here. If this is a keeper, yeah, that's a keeper. I want y'all to look what a fish. I want y'all to look what a crappie <laughs> what am i saying look what a big song okay let's go ahead and add him and that'll be our limit that'd be our limit of sauger right there that's no doubt a 15 inch fish at least look at there what fish beautiful sauger mouthful of teeth i'm ready to get out of here now that's unusual for me wanting to, to leave but we got a limit right here of sauger which is a blessing there's five in there we'll take a look at them when we get home it's just rough just one of them old rough rough days and i'm gonna have to cross all that white water over there maybe bessie can do it and we'll check them birds out too while we're crossing. And we'll go home, fillet them up, and we'll see if Sue Bob will fry them for us. I tell you what, folks, <laughs> those, I want y'all to look at the birds, the seagulls. And right up here on top of, that's the most blue herons I've ever seen. They're on top of this deal right here in front of us. There's probably 12 or, or more blue herons on top of that. This is some real turbulent stuff right here. All these floodgates right here, if y'all can see, are open. And that makes it pretty dangerous, really. <clears throat> Fresh water is a lot more dangerous than salt water as far as the waves because um, fr uh, fresh water is a lot heavier than salt water. Oh, 
okay, folks, I made it home. Finally, I feel like it was a blessing that I caught five keepers. Now, as far as Sauger, I probably caught about 25. But out of the 25 bites that I got from Sauger, only five measured. So, but we did get a limit. Five big old pretty Tennessee River Sauger. And we're going to go ahead and fillet one up right here. I'm actually I'm going to fillet them all up. Mama Sue's going to cook them for us. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and clean one of the. Well, actually, I've done clean one right there. We got two fillets ready. But I cleaned these fish. Now, these are beautiful fish. I want you to look at there. But I cleaned these fish just about the same way as I would any other fillet any other fish. I just get in here as close as I can to the head, make a cut, okay, turn him over. And then I'll outline right there at the backbone. I won't cut deep. Not over an inch. But go all the way down the backbone just like that. Okay. Now that gives you something to go by. Just ride that backbone. Just like that. It's real easy to do. Now this backbone... On a sauger, <clears throat> y'all excuse me, I'm having to touch my camera. Uh, it, the, the rib cage is very thin. Those bones are, so I just cut through it, through those right there. Okay, we're done through them that quick. Right here, and then ride with that backbone. Now look how close this cut is. Well, there's a little bit of meat, but not, not much wasted right there. Very little. Now, I leave this intact so I'll have something to hold on to. And I'll just start right there and go all the way down, keeping in contact with the skin. And as you can see, there's nothing there but skin. Ain't that a beautiful fillet? Now, Mama Sue likes some boneless. She ain't like old man Ricky. She wants some boneless. So what we're going to do is cut that rib cage out. Just like that. That's a boneless fillet right there. And Sauger is a very delicious fish. To cook Richard's fish, I use uh, olive oil. Start over. Come on. I did a fart. <laughs> In order to cook these sauger, I like to use olive oil. It's good for you. And I just put it in the pan like this. Turn it on medium and let it, the oil get heated up. And I use this bowl. This is my favorite bowl. I put some cornmeal in it. I use cornmeal and I usually put about two cups in here of cornmeal. And then I take my salt and pepper shaker here and put it in the cornmeal. pepper in there real good. Lots of peppery, lots, lots of pepper. What's she doing there? I'm talking to my little corgi pup. She's underneath me. She's always got to know what I'm doing. And then I take the sauger and I Put it in the cornmeal. This much right there, I usually put all of it in the bowl. Put a lid on my bowl.
shake it up like this. That was my other Cory. Her name's Annie. to get hot so I can put my fish down in there and that's about all I do so when the oil gets hot I just put my fish down in the oil and let it cook Sometimes I'll take the pepper shaker and shake some pepper on there. And that's about all that I do. Just some olive oil, cornmeal in a bowl. Put your fish in there and shake it up. Put your some salt and pepper in your cornmeal. Put your lid on your bowl and Make sure all the cornmeal gets on the fish and get ready to fry. So while the fish is frying, I'll be right back. We like it. Come on out and try it. We're hungry. Me and River's hungry. Worse, I'm so hungry I could eat a frozen dog. No, not a frozen dog. <laughs> Are you hungry, River? I'm hungry. Listen. <laughs> oh, that fish is gone. Sauger is. Delicious, folks. That's the best fish I've ever eat, baby. <laughs> bon appetit. Well, folks, we're going to get us some <clears throat> grits and all, all kinds of stuff. What are we going to have? Baked beans. Grits and, and beans and, two. and two. collards. Collards to eat with them fish. That's going to be a good meal. I'm going to tell you what. I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed showing y'all a finesseful presentation that will put Sauger in your boat. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel. Woo. Hey, doggone it. Doggone it. Doggone. Hey, woo, woo, woo. And remember, don't be the thing you can, but call this good bird.